Hello and welcome to this special interview as Airtime celebrates pilots all around the world. My name is Michael Jonga and joining us today as part of our International Pilots Day activities is Adva Amir. Adva is a pilot, mentor and the co-founder and CEO of Direct, a company she founded that creates time-saving solutions for frequent business flyers. She also founded Digitasa, a multimedia firm that offers advertising, content, and social media services. Adva is passionate about aviation, and she advocates and promotes the role of women across the sector. For Adva, the sky is not the limit, the sky is home. Adva, thank you for bringing your story to Airtime today. Thank you for having me. So just starting on your story, uh, just reading into it, four years ago, you arrived in the U.S. without direct experience uh, in the aviation sector. However, your journey led you to, uh, to call the sky your home. Could you tell us how your journey unfolded and what do you think is needed uh, for someone to achieve their goals and dreams? So it's a great question, Michael. During my journey to become an airline pilot, I was working hard. I was flying a lot of hours. I was sleeping little, but enough. And I kept studying 24 seven. I left my home country, Israel, about six years ago to make my dream come true. And at the age of 22, after my military service, I left everything behind and flew to the other side of the world, literally the United States, to become a pilot. I didn't know how this journey will end, but I can tell you that I was focused on working towards my dream while ignoring all those background noises. Um, and throughout my short career, I was sharing my experience as a woman in a male dominated industry in order to inspire other women to follow their dreams and join this amazing industry. Um, so for your question, I think it's a short answer. I believe hard work and determination can lead you to great places. Now you've talked about, you talked about leaving home and really uh, jumping into the unknown. And sometimes uh, that can come with obstacles. You talked about there being background noises uh, that can get in the way, but you've also mentioned that it's important not to let those uh, obstacles get in the way of your career. What, what did you say or what, what did you do to keep going when people told you no? or when people said that being a pilot is not for women, what did you say? That's true. Uh, and it wasn't always easy. Throughout my journey, I got lots of comments, as you said, doubting my dream and my ability to actually make it come true. I've heard so many things such as you're too young, you're too gentle, you're a woman, and there are no women pilots. And those are just part of the comments. Uh, in the beginning, it was hard hearing it over and over again, because as so many people tell you that, you start to believe. But with time, I learned that all I need to do is believe in myself and ignore all those background noises, as those comments are clearly not based on facts. And most time, those comments came from people that don't know me and what I'm capable of. So I learned to believe in myself where nothing else matters. And of course, you always have to find a supportive environment, the people that will support you. And your positive environment will help you leave all the negative energy behind. So I was blessed to have a supportive family and friends who believed in me from the first moment. So first, find this determination in you. And second, find your supportive environment. And if you don't find it, it's okay because you still have yourself. I mean, that, that, that's such a strong message. And, and obviously one does need determination, especially to, to get to their goals and, and achieve their dreams. Could you tell us uh, some of your most memorable experiences uh, in aviation and how your journey developed as a pilot? Uh, I have a couple of memorable experiences that uh, um, I experienced throughout my uh, journey in my career, but I actually have a, a kind of a funny story with a lesson in the end, and this story actually happened on the ground, uh, but I learned a lesson from uh, life from a seven years old kid 
So while on the takeoff run, I was working one of those days flying from San Francisco to Los Angeles uh, on the runway for the V1 speed, which is the decision speed where you decide if to take off or abort take off if anything happens. Uh, we get an indication that requires us to abort the takeoff and stop on the runway. Um, so at this moment, it becomes very busy. We need to connect the to contact the tower, to exit the runway, to run checklists, to speak between ourselves, to let the flight attendant know, speak to the passengers, and many other stuff. Um, of course, notify maintenance and the dispatch and everyone else on board. As per our procedure, we had to go back to the gate, deplane everyone, and let maintenance check the airplane. Uh, at that moment, I was sure the passengers are upset, they are furious, they are very frustrated because it was an inconvenient situation for everyone. So we go back to the gate, we park at the gate, um, we shut down the engine and open the door of the cockpit. And then a seven years old kid comes to the fly deck and he was so excited. He says, wow, that was so fun. Can we do it again? <laughs> so me and the captain, of course, we were laughing and this little kid taught me a lesson about perceptions and how you can make the best out of every situation or at least out of the most of them. I believe that for um, most of our passengers, it wasn't the most pleasant experience, but this kid took it as a positive experience and he probably um, thought we are the coolest pilots ever. So in every situation, uh, also in my flight career or outside my flight career, I think I learned to make the, the best out of the situation. And here in this story shows how a little kid can teach us a, a big lesson. So I really like this story. And for me, it was very memorable. I mean, that, that's a very uh, memorable and, and heartfelt uh, uh, story that you just shared with us there. Uh, but just coming back to, you know, making the most out of your experiences, especially coming out of uh, a pandemic period, uh, the period that we've been uh, living through as, as an industry together, what do you think have been some of the uh, lessons that you have uh, relied on or banked on uh, during this period? So the pandemic period, it wasn't easy. Um, I was just one week before I finished my airline training and finally made my dream come true. And then the pandemic hit, and unfortunately, the airline suspended training. I had to go back to Israel, um, and I didn't know when they'll call us back. So um, it was a strange situation. Everything you've been working for all the past four years suddenly all cut out in a, in a second. But I... Um, decided to uh, found my uh, company Digitasa for marketing agency to help small businesses um, to market their um, business online and I to help them during this crisis of the pandemic. And I did that for uh, one year when I was in Israel. Uh, it became fortunately a big success and I realized that also in hard situation you can, still be creative and find a way to, you know, still live, uh, do what you, you like to do and help other people as well. And talking about innovating and, and being creative in uh, an uncertain uh, situations, you also co-founded Direct uh, at a time where most businesses were closing down. Why was that the right time to uh, create and establish the company? And can you tell us some of the work that you do? Yeah, well, Michael, it's never a good time to start a business, I think. Uh, and like in life, uh, the best things happen when you least expect them. So with Direct, it was a big opportunity that came across my way and I jumped right in. It was in the middle of the pandemic. Um, the, and the people who know me well will witness that I rarely say no to opportunities, especially if it's something I'm really passionate about, like direct. Um, with direct, I felt it was the right time for me, the right team, and the right timing for our idea. 
we realize that there is a big gap in the aviation, in the private aviation industry, lack of technology and efficiency and a market that is close to travelers from high socioeconomic classes only. So we decided to disrupt the market in order to make air commute as casual as ride hailing while providing max flexibility for our passengers and max profitability for the operators, the ones who operate the private jets. Um, it was in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, it was about almost two years ago and we're still going. And till now, I think it was one of the best decisions I made to join direct and start this business. Oh, that's very really fascinating. And, and something I also find quite interesting uh, about some of your work is that you, you speak passionately about the role that women play in our industry. And you also gave a TED talk on how women can save the future of, of the aviation industry. What was your message in that presentation and why is that important for you? So in 2020, uh, before the pandemic, the aviation industry predicted a big shortage of pilots by 2040. So if we speak in numbers, Boeing assumed that there will be lacking around 800,000 pilots worldwide by 2040. As of today, there are less than 6% women pilots. And my idea in my TEDx talk was that if we're able to bring more women to aviation, let's say 30% women airline pilot, that's the dream, um, we will be able to minimize the shortage almost completely. And my key message in my TEDx talk was to break all the stereotypes that existed in the aviation industry, and some of them are still there. Um, I wanted to show women that it's possible to make it to the cockpit no matter what, that, um, you know, all these fear of a male dominated industry, the stereotype that women can't be pilots and moms, it is all just stereotypes. So I'm talking about that. And I wanted to show the world that women are no different from men and that together, thanks to the natural differences between males and females, both genders can create the safest cockpit in the world. Now you've mentioned how both men and women can work together to create that, that safe environment in the cockpit uh, across the world. Now, what more needs to be done inclusively across the industry to get more women into aviation today? So I have a simple answer for a complex um, question, but I think what we have to do, we have to be present and we have to raise awareness. The fact that we, and I'm speaking here about all the women pilots out there, uh, are walking in the airport terminal, our presence just by being there is huge. Showing those little girls uh, that walking around the airport or just being there as well, that they can do it as well, that they have role models. And if they want to be pilots, mechanics, or scientists, there's nothing that can stop them. Uh, it all starts with education, and as we spoke before, perceptions. So if we could come to schools, speak to those little girls and show them it's possible, maybe they will consider aviation as a career option because right now, unfortunately, not a lot of girls are considering it even as an option. So these days, uh, the exposure of those professions among girls and women uh, is not enough and therefore, we see a small percentage of girls that, and women who decide to become pilots, as we said, 6%. And unfortunately, this percentage is not going very high with years. Um, so changing the perception will put us in a different place. It will take us one step further to a real equality between the genders. It will open the aviation industry to many other women. Just coming back to uh, you talking about how role models have can have such an impact on uh, the next generation of aviators and how being present, how present is so important. Uh, on, on that note, what does being a pilot mean to you? Uh, I think being a pilot is the best job in the world. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's my freedom. And when I go to work, I rarely feel that I'm going to work. 
Uh, as a pilot, you get to travel to amazing destinations. You work with so many talented people. You are part of a dynamic and vibrant workplace and you fly incredible machines. Um, I think that one of the major advantages of being a pilot is flexibility. Being in control of your schedule, sometimes when you're not very junior, uh, allows you to combine other passions um, with yours. Uh, you can open a business, you can create projects, you can enjoy your hobbies, you can invest time in people you love. And this is very, 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 very important in life. So I think uh, this is why I think being a pilot is uh, one of the best jobs in the world that I know at least. I mean, that's, that's a very strong message uh, there that you shared on your experiences of uh, being a pilot. And on this International Pilot Day, um, what message or advice would you like to give to aspiring aviators or to young girls and women who want to follow in your footsteps to become a pilot? If there is one tip I can give to all the aspiring aviators and young girls out there, it is to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself fully and I guarantee you'll be able to overcome any challenge with a positive attitude and determination. Um, eventually, you'll become unstoppable and will be able to achieve all your goals. You just need a positive attitude. Adva, that brings us to the end of this interview, but not the end of our time together. At this point, I want to say a big thank you to you for your time and for sharing your thoughts and experiences with us here at Aerotime. Now I want to hand over to Richard Stevenson, the Chief Executive of Aerotime, who wishes to say a few words. Michael, thank you and Adva, thank you very much for joining Aerotime today and for sharing your story. I know that there'll be people all around the world that will find what you've said inspiring and it will encourage them to take their next step in their journey into an aviation career. And this is really important to us here at Aerotime and we've been scouring the world looking for the right people to help us on our quest to support our industry in the future, not just to recover from the COVID period, but to make sure that we're encouraging the brightest and the best talent to join our industry in the future. Now, we recognize that we can't do this on our own. So we've been looking for people like you to join us in this quest. And it's very much with that in mind that the Aerotime Global Executive Committee has decided to appoint you as an Aerotime Aviation Champion. Now, this appointment is made very much with your stories in mind because we want to recognize what you've already done in the aviation industry and what we're all very confident we will see you do in the future for the aviation industry. And I just want to read the citation on the certificate. It says, in recognition of their dedication to the aviation industry and for their efforts in supporting and promoting our people, our industry, and for encouraging the next generation. The Aerotime Global Executive Committee appoints Adva Amir as an Aerotime Aviation Champion. So Adva, I want to say a huge congratulations for this appointment, and I and all of the team here at Aerotime look forward to working with you in the future. As I said, we want to thank you for what you've already done, but we really want to encourage you to help us encourage the next generation of aviators. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much, Richard. Adva, congratulations on your appointment and thank you for joining Airtime today. Your story is inspiring and will no doubt encourage many women and men in the next generation. I'm sure that many of our viewers and any inspiring aviators look to you as a role model in our industry. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of this Airtime interview but stay tuned for more content coming soon as Airtime celebrates pilots all around the world. Thank you for joining us. My name is Michael Jonga and you've been watching Airtime. Goodbye. <laughs>